Hello, um, my name is Katie Rice, and for my musical slash film project, I will be presenting over The Greatest Showman. The cultural significance of this musical. The Greatest Showman follows the character P.T. Barnum, who, after getting laid off from his desk job, actually opens the first circus. The musical portrays the struggles of the people who are considered by society to be oddballs. Barnum chooses to take these people who feel out of place every day of their lives and make them feel special and loved by putting on a show for the townspeople. Now, I don't think this was his intention at first. I think he just wanted to make money, but eventually he created a bond with these people and actually started enjoying working with them and um, actually had a relationship with them all. At first, his efforts are made with extreme judgment, but as time goes on, the people who act in his circus are accepted by the community, and people even begin to love them. This represents the beginning of growth and acceptance that America is known for today. As people began to see that the so-called freaks who participated in the circus were indeed people as well. Another cultural aspect would be the racism that goes on between Philip's family and Anne's and Anne. When she is brought to the theater as Philip's date, she is met with criticism from Phil Philip's family for the color of her skin. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Free Write the Stars is a song performed by Zac Efron and Zendaya. It is a duet between the two where Zac, who is portraying Philip, is trying to convince Zendaya, who is portraying Anne, that they can basically rewrite society's rules and be together regardless of the criticism that they are met with. And this will be a little sample of Rewrite the Stars from The Greatest Showman. And there are doors that we can walk through. I know you're wondering why, because we're able to be just you and me. So, the composers of The Greatest Showman, um, their names are Benj Pisak and Justin Paul, and this is a picture of them at the top. And back there, you can see Lauren's dress that she wore when she sang Never Enough, which is a song that I will play for y'all in a minute. Um, Benj Pisak's mother was a professor and developmental psychologist. She actually wrote and performed songs from a child's point of view and Benj began to join in on her performances at around the age of seven. So this was his first real um, exposure to the world of music, was his mother. He also participated in the Philadelphia Boys Choir and Chorale and took part in his school's musicals. After high school, Pasak went on to earn a BFA in musical theater from the University of Michigan. It was there that he met Justin Paul at freshman orientation. They discovered they both had shared interest for the work of composer and playwright Jason Robert Brown and the musical Merrily We Roll Along. From then on out, 
they quickly began collaborating. Binge and Justin's Partnership Binge Pasak and Justin Paul have been long known for their partnership in composing the songs for popular musicals such as La La Land and Dear Evan Hansen, along with The Greatest Showman. After meeting as only young musical theater majors in the mid-2000s, the pair made their Broadway debut with A Christmas Story, the musical, in 2012. They both won their first Oscar for City of Stars from La La Land and their first Tony Award for Dear Evan Hansen in 2017, so 2017 was a very big year for them. They also made their debut at the top of the Billboard 200 in 2018 with the soundtrack to the film The Greatest Showman. The first song they ever actually wrote together was titled Edges. This song went viral within the musical theater student community and was performed at schools around the country. When they were 21, they both won a cash prize as part of the Jonathan Larson Award. At the time, they were the youngest people to have ever won the award. They then went on to write music for Disney and soon arrived on the Broadway scene before moving on to film production. And Never Enough was a song sang by Lauren Allred in an opera setting. It features Lauren singing all alone in the middle of a stage, only accompanied by a piano in the beginning, and then it adds instruments as you go along, as she goes along and sings the song. Um, the song starts off soft, and it grows in the middle, and eventually ends on a soft note. And this is actually my favorite song in the movie. I love what she's wearing, I love everything about it, and yeah, I just love this song. So here we go, here is a little snippet of Never Enough. Yes, I love this song and I love singing it. So, favorite song in the whole movie. <laughs> Popular music, um, The Greatest Showman consists of songs from the pop music genre. Around 1950, many composers started to use pop music within their films rather than the symphonic Hollywood film score. It was soon found that songs are more likely to become that these types of songs are more likely to become hit, hits than instrumental pieces. Words began to be added to an instrumental movie theme in order to popularize both the theme and the film. By the 1950s, many movie scores included popular songs. Some examples of these songs are Do Not Forsake Me, Oh My Darling, and song titles from around the world in 80 days. Pop scores continued to be popularized in the 1960s, attracting a younger audience to films whose songs frequently outshone other features of the score and earned more money than the films that introduced them. Many pop songs act independently of the films that feature them, but some pop songs, such as the pieces providing the title sequence of the James Bond films, recur in instrumental as well as sung versions to underpin the drama throughout those movies. Loose collections of pop songs packaged 
by Hollywood for an audience shaped by MTV and Madison Avenue increasingly take over and replace orchestral scores in the films of today. And these are my sources, and I'm really happy I actually got to use the book in this presentation. So I hope you enjoyed, and um, I hope you guys love The Greatest Showman as much as I do, because I just fell in love with it the first time I watched it. So I hope everyone has a fantabulous day, and bye!